Hi, my name is Atif Darush, professor and consultant of obstetrics and gynecology. Today, I'd like to highlight an important topic of cervical cancer prevention and screening in low and middle income countries. And actually, I decided to deliver this lecture after uh, my previous lectures on the uh, colposcopy and how to uh, perform diagnostic hysteroscopy uh, and how to perform uh, operative uh, uh, colposcopy as well. And I noticed that some of the audience and my students actually are confused regarding the terminology, the, regarding the procedure of colposcopy and the significance of cervical cancer screening particularly in developing countries with limited resources. So I decided to uh, highlight an important topic to differentiate between the uh, status of cervical cancer prevention and screening in developed countries and in developing countries. Because if you are working in low middle income countries, you have to uh, follow the regulations to have, you have to know the situation in your country rather than knowing some literature from developed countries, which is not applicable in your location. And all of us know that cancer cervix is a preventable disease. It is a public health problem, and it is only gynecologic cancers that can be prevented by vaccination and rigorous screening. It has some risk factors like long-standing infection with HPV, HIV, with other, or other decreased immunity diseases, uh, multi-sexual partners, smoking, and taking immune-weakening uh, medicines. But for the developing countries, we have to realize that one of the most important risk factors is the failure to get regular gynecologic examination because of the uh, reluctancy of the ladies to go to the hostels or the clinics to be examined or screened for such a serious disease. But unfortunately, we have to know that approximately 85% of cancer cervix burden occurs in low and middle income countries, and almost 90% of the global cervical cancer deaths in 2018 occurred in low middle income countries. So we have to stop here and we have to uh, know what's the problem. The problem is in developing countries and low middle income countries because doctors are hearing too much about vaccination and hearing too much about HPV, uh, RNA tests and so. And these are not present on the ground. When you are in your clinic in any village or any small town in a developing country, you cannot see these tests, we cannot find these tests. So that's why more than 90% of a fifth of the death due to cancer cervix occurred in developing countries. So we have to stop and to start a new era of evaluation of cancer cervix screening and prevention in these developing countries. Firstly, also I noticed some, that some doctors are confused about the terminology used in colposcopy and in cytology. So I would like in these few minutes to highlight the uh, significance of these anatomic and uh, cytologic findings in a simplified way. What's the transformation zone? How does HPV cause cervical cancer and basics of VIA and VILI tests? These are important starting points for uh, proper screening in the uh, uh, low middle income countries. You know that the cervix is lined, the endocervical canal is lined by columnar epithelium and the ectocervix by squamous epithelium. Okay, on the effect of estrogen, the columnar epithelium goes out into the ectocervix from the endocervical canal. So a part of the columnar epithelium is seen on the ectocervix, and this is called ectopy, which means ectopic columnar epithelium. And this occurs physiologically at the stage of puberty. 
And the uh, after some time, the uh, columnar epithelium starts to regress into the endocervical canal, and the area of columnar epithelium is invaded by squamous epithelium from all around, and this is called metaplasia, which is a transformation zone from the columnar to squamous epithelium. And this area of metaplasia is bounded by an original squamocolumnar junction between the original and native squamous epithelium and the uh, metaplasia or transformation zone. And the new squamocolumnar junction between the columnar epithelium, the original columnar epithelium, and the transformation zone. In this transformation zone, all the problems of cervical ectocervical cancer occur because this is an active area of changing from columnar to squamous epithelium, so this activity of cells and cells are not resting at this stage. So this is the uh, metaplasia. Metaplasia is a phenomena. It is not a malignancy, but metaplasia is changing one type of epithelium into another type. And in this particular site, the change from columnar to squamous epithelium. And this uh, transformation zone has three types. If the, uh, uh, in the uh, squamoclumular junction is seen on the ectocervix, this is type one. If it is seen in, inside the endocervical canal, this is type two. And if it is partially visible or not visible at all, this is type three transformation zone. Of course, if you cannot see this columnar junction, well, you cannot guarantee that this patient has uh, endocervical malignancy or cancer cervix or not, because I cannot see the squamoculumnar junction well. So type one, of course, is easier for diagnosis, and type three is the most difficult in diagnosis and needs more additional uh, tests of, uh, to assess the uh, status of the endocervical canal. So the picture here shows you that this is the native ectocervix, native squamous epithelium. And this is the uh, new squamoculumnar junction here, new squamoculumnar junction. And this is the original squamoculumnar junction. This is the ectopy, this is the columnar epithelium. And the area between the new squamoculumnar junction and native squamoculumnar junction is called metaplasia. This is the site of activity. If you see the squamoculumnar junction, this is a type one transformation zone. Now, the second point in the basic science for you is the, how the HPV uh, or virus causes malignancy. HPV attacks the epithelium due to abrasion in the uh, epithelium or the, in the endocervix. And through these abrasions, in the vagina, the uh, virus invades the uh, squamous epithelium, and more than 90% of the cases, uh, 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 the immune system can overcome this virus and it cannot attack the cells, but in few percentage of cases, the virus uh, attacks the cells and starts to change the uh, replication of DNA in the nucleus and form abnormal coilocytes in the uh, epithelium. And these are uh, considered as type uh, uh, one or two of CIN in the uh, modern classifications. But you have to know that not all cases of HPV are uh, changed into uh, uh, cervical cancer, uh, just less than 1% or 0.8% uh, can lead to a progression of the long-standing uh, uh, HPV infection. And you have to know that HPV type 16 is responsible for around 60% of cervical cancer and type 18 is responsible for around 10 to 20. So HPV is responsible for around 70 to 90% of cases of cervical cancer. Fortunately enough, the uh, pre-malignant cervical change starting from CIN1, cervical interabithelial neoplasia 1, 2, uh, and, and 3, before carcinoma and cyto, this takes long time, up to 25 years. So we have a good time to screen ladies and to prevent 
the progression of this disease. And as I told you, HPV is a uh, DNA, uh, 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 non-enveloped DNA virus that attacks the nucleus and change the, uh, uh, and gives uh, uh, messages through the messenger RNA, which is small sized and goes outside the membrane of the nucleus to the ribosomes and change the behavior of the cells. So the appearance of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia is uh, enlargement of the nucleus and mitotic figures and before uh, invasion of the basement membrane. Once invasion of basement membrane occurs, this is uh, cervical carcinoma. Very important to understand what is the basics of colposcopy and the screening tests used in developing countries, in low middle income countries, this is in an important slide because we have to know that squamous cells are either resting cells or active cells. The resting cells are those of the ectocervix, which are native or original squamous cells. The active cells of the squamous epithelium or the cells in the area of transformation zone or metaplasia, okay? What is the dif difference between the resting cells and the uh, active cells? The resting cells have low protein content because the nucleus is normal sized and the cytoplasm contains a lot of glycogen. Glycogen is the source of uh, uh, energy for the cells. So. The normal cells have good amount of glycogen in the cytoplasm and small sized nucleus. This is the, uh, 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 the finding in the normal resting cells. So low protein content in the nucleus. If I put a stain of the protein to the cells of the native or resting squamous cells, the nucleus is not stained. So the cell is not stained by this stain of protein because the nucleus is small sized. And this is the basic of uh, application of acetic acid to the cervix, which is called via or visual inspection of cervix after application of acetic acid, three to 5%. When we apply the acetic acid to the resting cells of the squamous epithelium with normal nucleus, small sized nucleus, it contains minimal amount of protein. So there is no coagulation of this protein by this acetic acid. So acetic acid test in normal native original resting squamous cells is negative. At the same time, it contains good amount of glycogen. So if we put a stain for the glycogen to the resting original native squamous cells with high glycogen content, it will change into brown staining because of the high glycogen content. So these are the basics of two important screening tests should be done by all health providers in the developing countries, which are acetic acid application and local iodine application, VEA and VILI tests. These are very simple, very easy, applicable, valuable tests that should be put in mind in uh, minds of all gynecologists and all nurses in developing countries. On the other hand, if we have uh, an active cell like metaplasia or neoplasia or carcinoma in situ or CIN, the active cells, the activity and the abnormality towards malignancy occurs in the nucleus. The nucleus becomes enlarged with frequent mitotic figures with high protein content due to replication of the DNA in the nucleus. So if I put the stain of protein on this cell, it will coagulate and the test will become positive. So it becomes acetic, uh, acetic white area seen by colposcopy or by naked eye. And this is test of high protein of the active squamous cells. On the other hand, the active squamous cell has con 
uh, has low glycogen content. So if I put uh, iodine, it will not stain. So positive iodine test means no staining, no staining. And negative iodine test means staining of brown staining of the original uh, cells. Positive acetic acid test means staining of the protein and negative acetic acid test means no staining of protein. So the glycogen content of a squamous ethereal uh, cells decreases when the glycogen content of a squamous cells decreases and anaplasia increases. This is a truth by, mentioned by many applications. So importantly to understand what happens in the active cells of metaplasia and uh, neoplasia with high protein content and low glycogen content. Uh, 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 on the other hand, the resting cells are uh, the reverse. And this is the appearance of the uh, uh, glycogen labeled rich stores in cytoplasm and nucleus with high protein content as mentioned in this uh, last uh, recent publication. Now how to prevent cervical cancer? Prevention means primary prevention, secondary prevention and tertiary prevention. Of course, primary prevention is the best by education to decrease risk uh, of abnormal sexual behaviors and decrease exposure to HPV mainly by HPV vaccination. Secondary prevention by screening and treatment of precancerous lesions. And this is the new concept of the WHO, which is screen, triage, and treat at the same time. And tertiary prevention, of course, when you have a case of malignancy, uh, uh, when you diagnose it early, uh, you can uh, treat it uh, hard properly uh, uh, and aggressively to avoid extension of the disease. And this uh, strategy. Uh, uh, is important uh, to eradicate this disease. Importantly to know that the WHO plans to eradicate cancer cervix in by the year of 2030, like small box eradication. And this can be achieved by screening and vaccination. And they mentioned that type 16 and 18 vaccination uh, will eradicate at least 70% of cases of uh, cervical cancer as uh, persistent HPV infection may lead to 70 to 99% of cervical cancer, as mentioned in some uh, publications on meta analysis of 1 million women with normal cytologic. Uh, findings. So the uh, prevalence of HPV in five continents uh, in around 1 million ladies uh, was found to be 99% of cases of cervical cancer. So this highlights the important uh, role of vaccination to eradicate the disease. And this is the vaccine against uh, HPV, and it has different types, as you know, it should contain vaccine against type 16 and 18, but some others contain vaccines uh, against other types of HPV. Now we have to perform a screening test in a developing country, in a low middle income country. What is the value of screening? As I told you, WHO means, uh, mentions that we have to do screen, triage, and treat. Screening test is searching for a disease in a good amount of people, okay? In the population, like the previous study on 1 million ladies. So if you are talking about millions or thousands of ladies, the screening test should be very simple, should be easy, should be applicable, should be cheap, should be available, should be uh, night time consuming, should not uh, cause too much for the uh, healthcare uh, services of this country. By doing screening for a disease, you find some patients with suspicion of having this disease. So you go directly to triage, which is second 
test to confirm if this patient has true positive or uh, false positive results by the screening test. It's expected that the screening test has high false positive results. And if you make try a second test, you will find uh, the real cases of positivity and exclude other cases uh, of uh, uh, false positive results. Now we are talking about developing countries or countries with low middle income uh, 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 resources. What are the screening for cervical cancer? Can I do HPV DNA test? It's very expensive. Can I do colposcopy? Not always available. Cervicography? Not always available. Can I do PAP smear? Yes, you can, but also it is not fulfilling the criteria of a good screening for developing countries because of limited resources, because of lack of experienced cytologists and so on and so on. So we have to focus on these important three screening symbol tests that are naked eye examination of cervix, via and villi tests. We have to know that the screening or prevention of cervical cancer using PAP tests uh, is, um, was important to uh, minimize the death of this disease by more than 70%. But the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists mentioned that uh, the interval between screening, uh, 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 interval between screening of the ladies should be, uh, uh, should be fewer bad tests for women and before the age of 21 has been uh, avoided. And HPB testing at certain time in combination with BAP test uh, uh, is important, particularly with abnormalities of the cytology. Now the BAP test, you know, it is a simple test done by brush or IR spatula. The patient can do it herself at home and send it in an envelope after fixation to the lab, but it has high false negative rate and adequate sampling of transmission zone, poor collection and fixation, uh, inclusion of excessive blood, inflammatory material or necrotic tissues. And you have to understand the findings of the uh, uh, cytologic report if you receive it from the lab, uh, because they analyze the cells. The cells simply are coming from the ectocervix or the endocervix. Ectocervix may be normal cells with some inflammation, maybe low cell or high cell, which means low grade squamous intraarthelial lesions or high grade squamous intraarthelial lesion. The first is consistent with CIN1, second is consistent with CIN2 and 3. And some gray zone interpretations, which is called atypical squamous cells of uh, uh, undetermined significance uh, uh, that requires a toll, as requires uh, colposcopy also, and atypical squamous cells suspicious for high uh, uh, cell, high grade squamous intraarthelial lesion. These are the test the classification. And uh, of course, they are consistent with the uh, WHO or CIN classifications. This is regarding the ectocervix, either definite interpretation, normal or inflammatory, low cell, high cell. Uh, atypical squamous cells of undetermined significance or atypical uh, squamous cells suspicious of uh, high uh, cell. Regarding the endocervical cells, if you see endocervical glandular cells, they may be atypical glandular cells of undetermined significance or favoring neoplasm or adenocarcinoma in situ or adenocarcinoma. So if you see endocervical glandular cells in the smear, this may be the finding. If you see ectocervical, this may be the finding. This is endocervical, this is ectocervical findings. Okay, I told you BAP is not available in many, many uh, uh, developing countries due to the restrictions. So 
we have to search for an alternative suitable for our locality, our community. We have to use the most important factor for cervical cancer screening is nursing because nurses are all the time available in the clinics and they are females and many females uh, agree that they can take this sample for them. And this is a reality in some villages and some rural uh, uh, communities. So we have to use the, uh, to get the maximal benefit of having nurses in the clinics. And this was the uh, uh, cornerstone of one of our studies on naked eye examination as the first screening test against cervical cancer. And we uh, uh, screened 3,500 non-pregnant women, and we found that unaided naked eye examination is an excellent uh, detection method or screening method, very cheap. Just put, insert a speculum and look at the cervix like the saline technique of colposcopy to see any abnormal vasculature in a suspicious cervix, ectopy, and so on. And if you find any abnormality, you refer the case to do colposcopy. At the same time, we perform cytology and compared the results of naked eye examination to cytology, we uh, detected uh, comparable results. So this is the simplest test. And please put this test in your mind when you are examining any lady for infertility, for infection, for any cause, just to look at the cervix. Don't ignore cervix. I noticed that many doctors uh, nowadays are relying on doing ultrasound for gynecology, whether transvaginal or transabdominal. Ultrasonography is not an examination tool. It is an investigation after a proper examination. The second and simple test is application of acetic acid to the cervix and seeing cervix after application. And it's, it's recommended by WHO in low resource countries uh, for primary cervical cancer screening or uh, triage of HPV positive women uh, living in low resource countries. Yeah. Which means that if you have a patient with HPV positive, uh, tests in your locality of low middle income uh, countries, you can perform via for this lady to check the cervix if she has manifestations of acetylwhite, as I told you, due to high protein content of the nucleus or not. So it is highly recommended for, by WHO. It is very simple, applicable, cheap, available, and can be performed by nurses. Uh, also, as I told you, not always doctors. And here is algorithm to see if you don't have HPV testing at your locality, go directly to VIA uh, as a screening test. And we performed a study by nurses, actually, by nurses at our locality and published it in one of the journals of nursing on what's called double test, which is uh, naked eye examination of cervix followed by via and we achieved comparable results to cytology and this alternative tool of double test uh, was proved to be simple cheap high percentage of patient acceptability help expanding screening programs in countries where PAP is poorly available and uh, importantly uh, can be done by nurses the third and important simple easy test is really test screening test, which is visual inspection after application of Lugol's iodine to the cervix. I told you the cells with high glycogen uh, content are normal resting cells, so they take the brown color due to uh, uh, high glycogen content. But abnormal cells with high protein uh, 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 high uh, replication of the nuclei uh, have uh, low glycogen content, so they are seen as uh, glycogen uh, negative areas, or the test is positive having these uh, uh, really negative areas, or uh, Lugol's or Schiller's iodine negative areas. And these are areas of mosaicism, which is a part of colposcopic appearance of cases of CIM. You can see also it by naked eye if you are skillful and uh, at least you put the uh, villi 
and see if it is brown, this is healthy. Uh, cervix, if takes the iodine uh, negative area with sharp borders like this, this should be evaluated by colposcopy and you have to take biopsy from these abnormal areas. And this test is actually very valuable and a recent publication on 100 years of testing uh, with a critical review uh, found it is very valuable and should be implicated in the uh, uh, medical and uh, practical uh, approach against cervical cancer. So till now, I told you about VIA, about naked eye, about VILI, all are very cheap available tests in the developing countries. If you are trying to be confused, you have to hear that the uh, in January 2015, the uh, FDA approved HPV uh, DNA testing as a primary or first uh, uh, test performed for cervical cancer screening. So it is a, a, a BCR test important for screening against cervical cancer as recommended, uh, as approved by FDA and approved and recommended by all societies. And a negative HPV test is more assuring than a negative cytology as mentioned by the Cochrane Review. So the approach in such a case is to, uh, is to uh, do uh, primary HPV screening. If it is negative, you have to repeat it after five years and HPV positive 16, 18, you have to do colposcopy, other types of HPV than 16 and 18. You can do cytology if negative, repeat HPV after one year. If positive, you have to proceed to colposcopy as recommended by the FDA. So the modern, modern approach for screening is HPV dependent. If it is negative, repeat after five years. If positive for 16, 18, you do colposcopy, positive for other types, cytology, if still positive, colposcopy, if negative, repeat after one year. But this is not always applicable for middle income uh, countries. Also, another screening test is called POSCO, which is bilocular, binocular visualization of cervix with magnification. And you have to see squamoculonal junction to assess the transformation zone. And there is a new study on uh, insertion of misoprostol versus estradiol 2 change type 3 transformation zone into type 1 or type 2 to see the squamoculonal junction and a single dose of misoprostol 200 microgram achieved uh, results successful. They uh, liked the, or similar to uh, the uh, application or uh, usage of high doses of uh, prolonged course of, uh, uh, of estradiol in uh, a recent study. And if you find any suspicion by colposcopy, you have to take a biopsy, which was used by, uh, done by a uh, bunch of biopsy forceps. And the uh, uh, accuracy of colposcopically directed biopsy has been criticized in a recent uh, systematic review and meta analysis. And it was found to be inaccurate, inaccurate in the patients with type 3 transformation zone, where the squamoculonal junction is invisible or partially visible inside the intracervical canal, postmenopausal women, women with 50 years or older, other factors like uh, uh, according to the number of deliveries, number of biopsies, HPV type and so on. So the biopsy uh, is not always conclusive and may be inaccurate as uh, found uh, in this uh, resystematic review and meta-analysis. And this, if you don't see this chromocranial junction, this is called unsatisfactory colposcopy or inadequate colposcopy, and you have to uh, go to another tool to evaluate the endocervical canal and the extension of chromocranial junction. And this can be by, uh, done by endocervical curettage, as it is recommended in women with type uh, HPV 16 infection, high cell cervical cytology or worse, more than 50 years or invisible transformation zone, as I told you, type three transformation zone, 
and patients with abnormal endocervical cortex should be given more attention and follow up uh, as uh, recommended in a recent uh, review. So these are the screening tests. If your locality has no resources, go directly to Naked Eye, to VEA, to VILI testing, and sometimes in the cervical curettage, if you don't see the scleroconomic junction well, and if you have facilities, you have to refer the patient for corposcopy, for corposcopically directed uh, biopsy, and of course, for HPV uh, uh, RNA testing, if you have the facility. Now, the timing of screening is important. If you have a patient in your clinic and she is uh, less than 21 year old, don't proceed for screening. And the old recommendation mentions that if she is 25 years, uh, from 21 to 25, you can do bad testing. And if she is 25, you have to do HPV RNA tests. If it is positive, type 16, 18, do corposcopy. If other types, BAP, if positive, do corposcopy. If negative, uh, uh, you can do HPV uh, test after one year, as I told you. And if the HPV test is negative, repeat it after three years. This is the old recommendation, OK? But the recent recommendations by the societies, uh, like the American Cancer Society, which is a recent publication in two into 2020 year, which means that no screening until 25, no screening from 21 to 25, no screening, and start by 25 by HPV test every five years, which is preferred, or HPV BAP uh, co-test every five years also is acceptable, uh, and uh, or BAP test every three years if no availability for HPV testing. And from 30 to 65, HPV test every five years, uh, co-test every five years, and BAP test every three years, as I told you. And more than 65, no screening if a series of, a series of prior testing uh, tests were negative. So before 25 and after 65, no screening, and we screen between 25 and 65, which are 40 years, every five years by HPV and so on. These are uh, more recent uh, recommendations. But the last recommendations by the WHO in 2001, as published in July 2001, that uh, the, for the general population of women, screen and treat, screen by HPV DNA test as a primary screening test, starting by the age of 30, not 25, okay? And you can perform it every five to 10 years screening, which is logic because as I told you, the progress of the disease takes between 17 to 25 years. So you can repeat the test after five to 10 years. So they decreased the duration of screening and they uh, raised the age of starting examination for the general population. So if you imagine a lady with uh, the age of 30, she can be examined by HPV uh, DNA screen test at 30, 40, 50, 60. Uh, this is four times in her life to screen against HPV. But for women living with HIV, with decreased immunity due to any cause, you have to do screen and treat, but you have to do triage. Not only screen, you have to do another test, additional test to confirm the diagnosis, positive second test. HPV DNA, okay, starting by age of 25, not 30. And it is repeated every three to five years. Here is five to 10 years screening test. So in such a case, you can do a screen, triage, and treat only. No screen and treat. Here is screen, triage, and treat, as these are the new recommendations by the WHO. The secondary prevention 
uh, of cervical cancer is proper screening and treatment of precancerous lesions. As I told you, the CIN1 is uh, treated by strict follow-up with repeat back test plus minus colposcopy, CIN2 and 3 colposcopy and biopsy, and we can proceed to colonization, surgical or laser, uh, large loop excision uh, by the monopolar diathermy or uh, ablation diathermy, ablation laser ablation or cryo uh, surgery was follow up. And I discussed these issues uh, in the operative colposcopy lecture in details. And loop uh, excision is uh, uh, similar to cold knife with acceptable results. What are the indications of large loop excision? Biopsy proven CIN2, persistent CIN1, uh, diagnostic large loop excision as uh, recommended in uh, a randomized study. As I told you, type 1, 2, 3, uh, 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 they are treated by type 1 excision. You uh, excise uh, 6 to 10 millimeter lens of cervical tissue, type 2, uh, less than 15 millimeter, and type 3, uh, equivalent to comb biopsy more than 15 length. And this is the part of the cervical canal removed uh, according to the type of transformation zone. That's why I discussed with you the types of transformation zone in details in the beginning, at the beginning of this lecture, to know that the type of large loop excision depends on the type of the transformation zone. Okay, I don't have colposcopy. What to do? You can have a cervicoscopy. You can have mobile phone examination of cervix for magnification and illumination. And some recent studies mentioned that if you don't have colposcopy, you proceed directly to large loop excision. Uh, and this uh, is uh, advantageous to uh, excise the area to be sent for histopathology. I have a lecture on cervicoscopy as a modern use of hysteroscopy as an alternative to colposcopy. And in these short movies, you can uh, see that we used hysteroscopy to see the cervix with magnification and illumination. The same idea of colposcopy without green filter, of course. And here is the line technique, and you can see the vasculature of the ectocervix and you can go inside the endocervical canal. And this is an advantage of cervicoscopy over colposcopy because you go inside the cervical canal without the need of an endocervical speculum. And you can see the endocervical canal if it has a pathology or not, polyp or not. And more uh, advancement of the endoscope uh, can see the uh, uterus. And here is some, after application of acetic acid, some mosaicism and abnormal uh, uh, transformation zone or metaplasia with mosaicism uh, due to uh, acetic acid application of high protein content, as I told you, to, due to activity of this area. And this is an indication of uh, biopsy uh, to be sent to see if the patient has CIN or not as uh, HPV or not. And this is an important uh, advantage of cervicoscopy or colposcopy in localization of any pathology uh, of the cervix. Again, in the second video, you can see this uh, inflammation, chronic inflammatory status of the cervix due to multiple nervothium follicles and abnormal vasculature. And you can see at the end of this uh, uh, video that we opened the uh, uh, Nabosian follicles and removed the mucus from the glands. And this can be uh, probably treated by cervicoscopy. These are the situations in the uh, uh, developing countries or low middle income countries. But at the same time, you have to know what's happening around you in the modern world, there are some recent advances. Number one, regarding cytology. Uh, they mentioned that cytology may have uh, inter-observer or intra-observer variation. So we, why not to have uh, uh, a form of computerization of cytologic findings? So uh, the FDA approved uh, uh, an expansion of 
cytologic examination plus SIN technology to uh, uh, see uh, the, uh, the cells are normal or abnormal with correlation with single cell of two biomarkers. And sometimes some studies on digital visual inspection after application of acetic acid using a special camera or a smartphone to uh, visualize the cervix after application of acetic acid. As I told you, uh, the uh, artificial intelligence nowadays is introduced uh, in a good way to all endoscopic approaches of gynecology. And here in colposcopy, there is uh, artificial intelligence called uh, colposcopy, which means that you take photos, pictures, or nurses, pictures of the cervix and send them via internet, uh, artificial intelligence cloud, or if you don't have good network, you can uh, use them from a local artificial intelligence server and the apparatus or the uh, system will program the pictures and will interpret it, the pictures and give you uh, 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 results of colposcopy, the pictures signifying normal or abnormal colposcopy. And actually uh, nowadays artificial intelligence assisted colposcopy with cervical Im images uh, is important uh, to uh, um, uh, minimize the inter-observer uh, variations and to overcome the uh, problem of decreased experience of the uh, colposcopists, as mentioned uh, in some studies, but in other studies, uh, it's proved to be of less value as uh, seen in this study. So colposcopy and artificial intelligence equals accuracy and five minute result. And the use of this artificial intelligence algorithms could soon allow automated and accurate cervical lesion uh, detection. And here are other studies on the artificial intelligence as I told you. And there is another service which is called the Remote Artificial Intelligence Assisted Cervical Cancer Screening System, which means the photos or the pictures taken by a nurse or any health provider are sent to an expert elsewhere and he can uh, uh, see them and interpret them and write the uh, diagnosis. And there is uh, cervical, uh, cervicoscopy photography which means cervical digital photographs evaluated through internet by three colposcopic experience, uh, col col colposcopists expert experienced in colposcopy. So the diagnosis is more precise and promising alternative. And this is called cervical digital photography. Uh, and as I told you, the photos can be uh, taken by the nurses or health providers. So. In conclusion of this important talk that you are a health provider. Don't forget that your job is not to treat diseases only. You have to screen for any possibility of cervical cancer by putting cervical cancer prevention and screening in your mind for all cases you examine, regardless of the complaints, because it's a good chance that you have a speculum examination of the ladies proceed to uh, naked eye examination via VILI or uh, any other simple test without uh, sophistication, without a lot of money, without apparatuses in your locality. If you have a facility of screening by HPV uh, RNA tests, which is an expensive test uh, in the modern countries costs around $100 and sent by uh, or supplied by many societies to developing countries by around five dollars uh, you can go ahead to hpv and doing hpv rna testing is an advantageous because you can repeat it after uh, 10 years this is a recent recommendation by who importantly to share nurses in your locality and to use whatever available tool to save your patient's life thank you very much